here this morning to the gathering online for our church family here at Canyon Springs Baptist. We're honored to have you here today. We trust that today's service will be a blessing to you. Not just the fact that we can come into your home where you're at and we can connect together through the Word of God, singing together, sharing together, and we just think that uh, this is an important time. And so I want to thank all of you that have already checked in. You've already uh, commented. You're watching. You're here. You're present. I want to thank you for that. And let me encourage you uh, to get the word out. One of those ways that you can do that is on your Facebook feed. You can share this live feed with all of your friends. And uh, they might be able to connect. They might be able to follow on here. And we would love for you to do that. Uh, so you could like our page, of course. And, but then also, if you shared that with your timeline and your uh, feed, that would be wonderful. Uh, I want to start out uh, with uh, some scripture. Uh, and I'm going to read several portions of scripture. We're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to have a few songs. And we're going to have some announcements and some preaching. And I think today will be a real big blessing to you today. If you have your Bibles, I really encourage you at home, uh, don't just be a spectator. Be a participant today. And so grab your Bibles. We're going to read a few scriptures and have a word of prayer. Matthew chapter 21, we're going to start here. And I want you to notice verse number 1. The Bible says that when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage under the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees, and strewn them in the way. And the multitudes that went before followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he uh, that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And I want to draw your attention to the book of Mark, chapter number 11. Mark, chapter number 11. Now, notice verse number 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples. And saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye have entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereupon never man sat. Loose him, and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways meet, and they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye, loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him, and sat upon him, and he sat upon them, excuse me, and many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I want to draw your attention to Mark, excuse me, John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12. And I want to read to you starting in verse 12. The Bible says on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they these things which were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. May the Lord bless the reading of Scripture this morning. Let's pray together, church family. Lord Jesus, we are gathered together for this day we celebrate Palm Sunday. The day that you left the Mount of Olives and gathered and traveled on a donkey down the pathway to Jerusalem. To what would be your crucifixion? The mock trial, the beatings, the heartaches, and the rejection. And Lord, today as we read this scripture we commend it to you we ask lord that you would guide it in our hearts change us forevermore we think of our church family i pray lord that the meeting together of canyon springs baptist church today would bring honor and glory to you and that we would lift up your name and shout out praise bless the remainder of our service lord have your will and way, we pray in your name. And all of God's people in their homes said, Amen. Praise Him, praise Him. Let's sing together.
right, let's sing together. Let's sing together and glorify the Lord for He is worthy. singing and uh, appreciate my girls helping me out and uh, what a blessing to see young people with a heart for God and young people that have a desire to serve the Lord in any capacity and uh, I'm reminded of the amazing amount of potential that we have in our young people and it is a blessing uh, to be able to do that. Well, today's message, we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter number 19. Luke, chapter number 19. And as you are turning at home uh, to Luke, chapter number 19, I want to draw your attention to a couple of announcements that we've got going on and a couple of things that I think... Uh, are quite needful of announcing. Um, we have um, an opportunity uh, during this trying time to give God glory uh, through and with one another as we give to the Lord through His church. And uh, one of the things and the ways that we are accomplishing this uh, our desire is to make sure that each and every member of Canyon Springs Baptist Church uh, is the healthiest possible, uh, that has uh, no opportunities to um, have this virus or contract this virus from anything that we are doing here at Canyon Springs. And we want to be uh, a source of help and healing during this time. And if you know of anyone that does have the coronavirus and is uh, dealing with that, we would love to know about that so that we can pray about that and pray for them. And uh, we would love for that to be happening there. Uh, in regards to our giving, some of you have asked about that. And giving is an integral part of the life and ministry here at Canyon Springs Baptist Church. Uh, we believe that giving is really an extension of our life uh, and it's an extension of our ministry and it's an extension of our worship. We really believe that we worship the Lord when we are tithing and giving our offerings to the Lord through our church. And uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're making it available for each and every one of you that is listening today online through our Facebook ministry here, that you can give easily online. You can go ahead and uh, write down uh, through your bank. You can do bill pays and save a stamp and put the church's name in there and the address and they'll send out a check and it'll get to us right in the mail. Also, uh, if you are able to have a quick pay or a opportunity like that through your bank. Most banks have quick pay through Zelly, and uh, you could just put down the church's name there and the email address for that giving is canyonspringsgiving at gmail.com. Any questions about that, feel free to uh, email me, uh, message me, messenger me, whatever it might be. want to make it easy for you. Also, 
we are accepting PayPal also uh, to that same email address, Canyon Springs Giving at gmail.com through PayPal. We want to make it easy for you to worship the Lord and easy for you to connect and to take care of the needs here at Canyon Springs Baptist Church. Uh, we want to also encourage you that we are having the drive through offering today, and that's going to be from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and uh, we just encourage you to come into the parking lot in your cars. You can drive by, open up your window, there'll be a plate there. We'd love to see your face and say, God bless you, and connect with you in a small, re in a small timing there as we are keeping up with all of the social distancing rules and protections and uh, we would love for you to be able to drive through the church parking lot the hours of 2 to 3 p.m. today is Sunday and uh, I've been I'm excited about uh, the next several weeks because it is Palm Sunday today and it is a gearing up if you will for an amazing day in the life of a believer. If you're a believer, next Sunday is a highlight in your life. It's not just an ordinary Sunday, but it is a Sunday that we have separated here to really focus and to uh, magnify the resurrection of the Lord in our hearts and in our lives. As a Christian, we are celebrating that. Now, I know that there's probably uh, going to be a different this year, as it is, I'm reminded about how often, as I was thinking about how things are going to be different, but I'm reminded also how some things change, and there's other things that will not change. And the truth of the resurrection will not change. He is alive. He is not dead. He is risen. Amen. And I want to encourage you to be a part of next week. I want to encourage you uh, to tune in in your homes at the right time. Commend, comment if you will, connect with us. But I also want to also let you know that we have a very special gift for you for Easter. It's not much, but it's something, and we want to make sure that Easter is special for you. And so I want to encourage you, if you feel up to it, and you feel like this is something that you like to do, there is a gift for you during the 2 to 3 p.m. drive through offering time. And there's going to be a little gift basket there for you, an Easter thing, and there's gifts in there. There might even be some chocolate in there. So I don't know if you need some chocolate. Maybe, uh, Tracy, should we uh, uh, throw a roll of toilet paper in there maybe? That might be something. And so, uh, boy, we'll have lots of people driving through then, won't we? Uh, but we want to make sure that all of our members have a special gift. And if you're a member, you're a special attender, you're a giver, come on, there'll be plenty. And we'd love for you just to drive through on that day. Easter, many of you, even if you give online, and many of you are doing that, uh, we want to encourage you that if you can, set aside that time, drive up to the church, drive through the drive through offering, and we'd love to give you a gift. I promise these gifts will be all sanitized, all virus-free, and you can take it home, and uh, you can enjoy that. And that is something special that, uh, as your pastor... Uh, I want to do for you because I desperately miss you and desperately miss the opportunity that we have to worship the resurrection of our Lord together. And uh, I want to encourage you in all that regard. So that's going to be next week. Also, I want to encourage you to tune in to our uh, Facebook news feed and our page at the church. And there's going to be several new things happening this week. We're going to be having uh, some devotions from and some thoughts from Pastor Al Hughes. We're going to be having uh, our own Joe Marcone is going to be doing 
uh, a Bible study here, and uh, that is going to be a blessing. I think it's going to be Tuesday, so you be ready for that. And then for the next several weeks, what we're striving to do is we're going to be trying to highlight some of our missionaries. And so we've asked them to send in a video, uh, a short video there. And so those things will be posted throughout the week. And we want you to get to know our missionaries and what God is doing in their life and some of the areas that we could be praying for them uh, while they're across the country dealing with the very same thing, different situations, different circumstances, but they're dealing with the same virus that America is. And so we want to connect with them. And so we're asking our missionaries to connect with us. And we're going to share that on our Facebook uh, randomly there this next several weeks. Now, uh, as you're there, as we prepare our hearts for the Word of God, the message portion here, make your way to Luke chapter number 19. Luke chapter number 19. And as you find yourself there, um, I want to draw your attention to this passage. We've read it as we read our scripture references. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all give us a wonderful account of Palm Sunday. And they all give us a lot of wonderful detail. And But we're going to look at this morning. We're going to look at Luke chapter 19, and we're going to draw some application and some help for you and I for today right here. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of it, this, the message, that it would go deep into our hearts, and that our church family would be encouraged and blessed. And by all means, if there is anything that we can pray about as a church family, we would love for you to comment on this video, I'd love for you to share that prayer request. I'd love for to be able to pass that along. And we'd love for to be able to any way we can to connect. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to get something from your holy word. And Lord, I know that there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things that can take our attention. And I just ask, Lord, for the next several minutes, Lord, that we might be able to focus upon what you might have for us personally. Lord, I pray that you take your word and use it for your honor and for your glory. Help me to be clear and concise and helpful today. We pray in your name. Amen. Luke chapter number 19, I want you to find your way down to verse number 28. This is a passage. The events are going to be similar to you because we read them earlier in the scripture reading. And uh, these events are important. Every single event in your Bible is important. We might not understand why, but it's important. And so Palm Sunday really is a time to praise the Lord. It's a time to be joyful. I know that we're having difficulties today being joyful. I know that you're having difficulties figuring out what am I going to do today. I'm stuck in the house. I don't necessarily know what to do. I'm laying around. Uh, I'm doing a pretty good job at feeding my or buffeting my body three times, four times, five times a day. I'm doing a pretty good job with that. But what do I do and how can I praise the Lord during these times? Uh, Palm Sunday is one of those times where we get to see that the Lord is fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy, how that Jesus was going to ride down into Jerusalem and be that promised king to the nation of Israel. 
It's prophesied in Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9. And we know, according to John chapter 12, we read it, that the disciples and many did not really understand this until he was glorified, until the events happened and they thought back, if you will, and they got the picture. I really believe that uh, God is using today and yesterday and tomorrow and all sorts of these events that are happening. I believe that he is not surprised. He is not uh, overwhelmed with information. He is not distraught at news. He is not taking this uh, and panicking at all. We have a God that understands all things. He is the one that has the big picture. And I do believe that just like the disciples didn't understand the importance of this prophecy of Zechariah chapter 9 being fulfilled at this time on Palm Sunday, I believe that you and I, as we are coming out of this time, we are going to be able to see, and it is going to be revealed to us, what God was doing and what kind of things God has in mind in his plan. And so I really think it's important as a Christian that we have to learn to praise the Lord at all times. We have to learn to praise the Lord in the good times and in the bad times. We have to learn to praise the Lord when we might be confused. Now, Life could be confusing. I've got a few 20-year-old daughters in my home now, and it's interesting. They seem uh, confused a lot. Is it that they're 20? Maybe. Is it that their brains have not fully formed yet? Maybe. I don't know. But they seem to be confused. They're confused about, hey, what's going to happen with this virus? And oh, well, what does it mean for my life? And, and, and what else can I do besides sit here, right? Or, and we're confused about these types of things. But our understanding of life can be confusing, just like the television, news, reporters, and information. It's confusing. It can be confounding to us. It can be a little crazy. I don't know about you, uh, I want to know truth, and I want, but I don't want to know it. all sorts of this information that may not be true 24-7. I'm a person that cannot fill my mind with all of those things every single day. So there's a lot of unsettledness today, isn't there? People are filled with worry. They're fretting. Their hearts are aching. They're worried about themselves and their family and their loved ones. They are, if you will, standing on unsettled ground. Now, Palm Sunday can give us some insight, if you will, and it can encourage us to continue to praise the Lord for what he's going to do in our lives not today but maybe in the future did you know that we can praise the Lord for heaven even though we're not there yet amen did you know that we can praise the Lord for what God is going to do in our life through our sacrifice, our ministry? Did you know that we can praise the Lord, that we know that this church is all about seeing souls saved? And we can praise the Lord because He is the Lord of the harvest. And we can rest assured that we are going to be able to be a part of that harvest as we sow the seed of the gospel. And we could praise the Lord for that. That hasn't happened yet, but it's gonna. It's gonna. And you might be there thinking in your home, what's gonna happen? 
I'm younger. What's going to happen? Who am I going to marry? Who am I going? What kind of a job am I going to have? What kind of a career? What are my next steps? Guess what? You can begin even now to begin to praise the Lord for the future. And you can say, I don't know what it is, but I know that God loves me and I'm a child of God. And whatever God decides in my life, it is going to be the exact perfect thing fit perfectly for me. Now, I know I've met a few people in my life. And honestly, I couldn't figure it out. What is going to go on with that person? I think all of my girlfriend's parents when I was in high school probably thought that. What is this guy going to do? What is going to happen to that guy? And so, we don't know, but if God's in the middle of it, there could be amazing things. And I want to get you a grip that with God, all things are possible. And we can be discouraged, and we can be afraid, but we don't need to stay there. We can move to praise, uh, praise about what God is is going to do. And I want you to notice that Palm Sunday is about praise for what he is going to do. It was about what God was about to do in the nation of Israel in the future. And we see that here in verse 28. Look, and when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And when it came to pass that he was come nigh to Bethpage, and Bethany, and so Jesus was making his way up to the Mount of Olives, if you will. He was going towards Jerusalem, and the Bible says here that it, it was called the Mount of Olives, and he sent two of his disciples. Now, I don't know about you, if Jesus was saying to me, let's go to Jerusalem, and we get to a certain place, and then he sends me to go somewhere, I'd be like, well, isn't this counterproductive? Let's just keep going. We're almost, let's keep going. But you see, God's timing is always right, and it's always in his heart, and it's always, it's always his will. And so we see this cult. I want you to notice, number one, the cult here as we think about opportunities to praise God for the future, the cult. And so here was these two disciples here in verse 30. Notice this with me. Read this with me. Saying, go ye into the village over against you, into which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied. Whereon yet never man sat. Loose him. And bring him hither. Now, for those of you that don't know what this talking about, this colt, it was a donkey. And it was a young donkey. It was a foal, it talked about. And so it was younger. And no one had ever ridden it. No one has ever trained it. No one has ever broken it, so to speak. And so I can just imagine in the hearts of these disciples, uh, what is Jesus asking me to do? Now remember, we read over there in John chapter 12 how that the disciples understood none of this. So, follow with me. If the disciples didn't understand any of what the importance of this cult was, uh, think about those disciples. They get a word from the Lord. It's time to obey. And I submit to you, they don't understand. How many would be like that? What's Jesus asking them? He says, I want you to go into the village over there. Now, they're in probably Bethpage. It's nigh into Bethany, and Jesus is quite known in Bethany. Uh, Bethany was where? Lazarus was raised from the dead. We studied that a couple weeks ago. And so there was some familiarity there, but he says, hey, when you go in there, you're going to see a colt tied up. And that's the one. And I want you to go get that. I want you to lose him. And Jesus says, and by the way, if anybody asks you about why you're doing this, you just tell them the Lord 
have need of him, the colt. Now, the Lord hath need of him. Did you know sometimes the Lord is going to be asking you to do some things that you might not understand? I don't know about you, I would kind of be like, I don't want to steal this colt. Uh, I mean, this doesn't sound like it's the correct manner or way of doing things. Just go up, hey, there's a colt, there it is. Boom. Now I reminded you, you say, well, did he steal it? No, he didn't steal it. Listen, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and everything is his. And this colt was prepared before the foundations of the world that he was going to be the one and he was prepared right there to do this amazing task of taking Jesus down that road to Jerusalem so that he could bleed, suffer, be crucified, and die, and buried, and risen again so that you and I could experience life and life everlasting. And so this donkey, this animal, has some significance. This cult is a great reminder that the Lord is always preparing our future ahead of our own understanding. He is always preparing you and me for the next day, and often we fail to understand what he's doing, and I want to encourage you. I really want to encourage you to get a hold of this truth that we don't need to be fearful. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and, and of sound mind. Listen, we don't need to worry. Uh, how long is this going to go? Uh, I'm concerned about the virus. I'm concerned about the length and the impact. But I know, and I know who I had believed and had persuaded that he is going to take care of whatever he needs to take care of. And this cult was already prepared for this Palm Sunday. The disciples had no idea. And this just goes to show you, I think you need to stop thinking sometimes with the Lord. You say, what are you trying to say? Be No, 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 no. I'm trying to say maybe you need to take the carnal the carnal part of your intelligence that you think you're so smart about, trying to explain away everything in the scripture and trying to come up with a, a solution to everything instead of just getting on your knees and getting on your face to an almighty God that knows everything and he's got a plan for everything and you can trust him and you don't need to worry about, well, where did the cult come from? Why are you stuck there? Why don't you just recognize that God prepared this cult for this day to do an amazing thing so that many people might live. Stop thinking intellectually about the Lord. No, no, wait, listen. It's important for you to rise above your intellect and begin to think relationally to your God. And maybe the little things that you don't know, they're not going to hinder you. Trace and I, we've been married 24 years, I think. It will it'll either be past or it will be coming, I'm not sure. But I think I'm correct. Something like that? Almost, she says. And to be honest with you, I know very little about women. I said it. And sometimes I love Tracy, and there's just sometimes I don't have to know why and all the intricacies, but I do know that I love her. And I do know that if she's asking me something, 
that she might have a plan. Now, that's the hard part because it doesn't seem like she does, but she does. And I have to make sure that I, in my relationship with her, uh, I'm listening to what she's saying, not analyzing every single word. Get to the heart. And you need to get to the heart of the Lord. Don't worry about uh, all these little details about the virus and the fact that there was an earthquake yesterday or there, or this or there. Listen, God's got a plan. He's very clear with us about it. And we need to just get on board. And this cult is a great reminder that God is preparing for our future, even though we may not understand. Now notice what he says here in verse 31. In verse 32, And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. I mean, I don't know if that would work at the grocery store. You need, a, you need some toilet paper? You go up to the aisle, you grab it, you go to the clerk, and they're going to be like, that will be 2595 bucks." That's where it's going, folks. For toilet paper. Okay? And you just say, I got it. The Lord hath need of him. And you take it on home. I mean, that's not the way of doing it, but this is what God said to do. And guess what happened? Listen, when God asks you to do something, and God asks you as a Christian to be faithful during all times, tribulation, good times, bad times, He is asking you because He wants you to trust in Him. And He wants you to follow with Him. And so when he comes here and he says, boys, go get that. This is what you're going to find. Notice, it was exactly like the Lord said it was going to be. And he says right there in verse 32, And they that were sent there went their way and found even as he said unto them. And as they loosed the colt, the owners thereof said unto him, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, the Lord hath need of him. Hmm. The Lord hath need of him. Just as Jesus said it was going to be. And I'm just glad that in my frail mind, in my weak-minded times, I'm glad. I don't know, have to know all the details, but I just need to make sure I know the one who does know all the details. And I can trust him. And when the Lord says, I can cast all my care on him for he careth me for, for me, that means I can do that. And I can believe that. Now if we see here in verse number 34 and 35, it says that when they said that, Lord, the Lord hath need of him. Notice verse 35. I want to talk to you not just about the colt, but I want to talk to you about the casting that was going on here. It says in verse 35, And they brought him to Jesus, so they brought the colt, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as they went, they spread their clothes in the way, and when he was come nigh, even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for the mighty things that they had seen." I want you to think about this casting that was going on here. Uh, they were praising God for something that God was about to do. To go into Jerusalem and present himself as king. And praising God for your future, which I think we all ought to be doing, means that you put Jesus above all of your garments that you have. We notice in verse 35, they brought the colt, but they did something. They cast their garments on the colt first, and then they put Jesus there on. Now, what do these garments here represent for you and I? Garments were a very important thing. Clothing. It's not like it is today where there's an abundance of clothing everywhere. People had clothing. They made it themselves. They've kept it for a long time. It was very important to them. 
And it was something that they needed for warmth, for survival. It was something that they would need for help. It was something that symbolized whether you had a little bit of glory, a little bit of uh, prominence. Maybe your clothing was uh, a little bit nicer than maybe somebody else's. Maybe it had a little bit of a color to the thread as you sewn into your coat certain things. This was quite uh, the story. And it represented who you really were as a person. And I'm just reminded here that the casting here was done for, for, for the Lord. They put it upon the beast, the colt, and then they put the Lord Jesus on the colt. These garments are a good rep representation of anything that you and I value in life. What is that? What's your heartbeat for life? What's important to you? We were watching a television show last night, and I asked the girls to do one thing. I said, would you put your cell phones down while we watch this program? We quickly found that that wasn't a good idea, Dad. We quickly found out that Wait a minute, that is important to me. Of course, I think I won the battle, but maybe not, I don't know. But they were casting their garments on the colt. They were saying, Lord, you need this, what I have. You need this. I don't understand this, but I am willing to give everything that I have. The very clothing on my body. And by the way, they didn't have uh, ability to go down to the grocery store or the clothing store and to replace it quickly. So they were giving something of sacrifice to the Lord. And then I want you to notice what they did. Then they placed Jesus on the colt. And, and, and I just want you to think about this casting here. They set Jesus on the colt on top of their garments. And the colt was important because Jesus needed to go down into Jerusalem. And the colt was important. And they cast their garments. And I want you to think with me how important it is that when we get into a situation and we may be un confused. We might not have the understanding, the understanding that we want to have. And God might be in our midst and calling us, and we might be seeing the need to give of our garments, or who, who we are, what we care about, what we, what we love. I want you to notice there's a significant order here. The order for the disciples were that we went and we got the colt so the Lord could ride down. But the very thing that's important to me, my garments, personally, I am not going to let the Lord ride on that colt without any cushion, without anything between that animal and between the Lord. Now, let's talk about that colt. The colt was not a clean animal. The colt, the, 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 the donkey, so to speak, was not an animal highly regarded as cleanliness. And so Jesus would be sitting on a colt. And the disciples says, Lord, we're not going to have you sit on something that is not worthy of you. And we're going to take our very garments, the very things that are important to us, and we're going to lay them down on top of the colt. And then you could sit on that, Lord. And notice the priority, the order of priority. It goes, the things of this world, my friend, they might be dirty. And the things that God has given us, they belong to the Lord. And we need to make sure that we prioritize the Lord above everything in our life that we think is important.
They sat Jesus on top. Let me ask you, what are we prioritizing right now? Is it our own feelings, our fear, and our anxiety? What are we prioritizing? How much money we have in the bank or how much money we don't have in the bank? What are we prioritizing? Listen, what a great picture. When we are involved in fulfilling the word of God, like this cult was, it was a prophecy, uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9, and when we are involved in uh, the, the prophecy or the fulfillment, if you will, of the word of God, how amazing that these disciples could have been there and given their clothing so that the Lord could have need of them. They cast their garments. Now, this cult is kind of interesting. Uh, there's some things that we need to know about this cult. It needed something that we all need, and I want to show you this. Look in the book of Exodus. Go with me there. Listen, if you're at home, follow me here. Exodus, you want to see this. Exodus, chapter number 13. It tells us a little bit about the cult. Exodus chapter number 13. And there's an important thing about this cult. And if we go down to verse 13, read with me here. Now God is giving them ordinances that they have to keep every year. And if you go down to verse 13, we see, And every firstling of an ass, that's a donkey, Shalt thou redeem with a lamb? And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And so you know what they you know what the Lord was saying here? Okay, you've got a donkey here, and you need to make sure that in order for that donkey to live, it's got to be redeemed first. And it's got to be redeemed as the law prescribes through the Lamb. And so this donkey, this young donkey that no one has ever ridden on except the Lord Jesus, needed to be redeemed. Because if he wasn't redeemed, he would have already been killed and not there. So he was redeemed. Look at chapter 34 of the book of Exodus. I want to prove this to you. Look at Exodus chapter 34. Look at verse 20. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem what? With a lamb. And if thou shalt not redeem him, thou shalt break his neck. So this idea is, is that that colt that was tied up outside that house in that place prepared ahead of time so that the Lord could ride him down into Jerusalem and so that he could go to the cross for you and me. Listen, it was prepared a long time ago, but it was also already redeemed. It was redeemed by the blood of a lamb. And I submit to you, friend, if you want to be used... In the praise of the Lord, you've got to be like this colt, and you've got to be redeemed with the blood of the precious Lamb, the Lord Jesus. This, if you notice our text in Luke chapter number 19, and I want you to look with me at verse 30 and 31. Something else about this colt. He says there, and I want you to go over against you into that which you enter in. You'll find a colt. What position was the colt in? He was tied, right? And yet, never man sat on him. What was needed when this colt was tied? He needed to be loosed, correct? Loose him and bring them hither, right? And so, <laughs> interesting that you are supposed to go why are you loosing the colt? And the Bible says, why? Because the Lord hath need of him. And here's a great picture. We know that the colt, in order to be used in the praise of God, 
needed to be redeemed. We know that from this passage, one of the things that had to happen in order for that cult to be used to the praise of man, or the praise of the Lord Jesus, excuse me, was that he had to be set free. He had to take those things that were uh, causing him to be in bondage, he had to be set free. He had to be loosed. He had to be set free. Because he was bound. He had to be released. I'm reminded of a passage of scripture in the book of Romans chapter 6. Let me read it to you. Romans chapter number 6. And verse number 14. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law. You are not held by the rope. You are not held by the chains. You are not held by anything, it says, but under grace. Wow. What an amazing thing that this cult, in order for it to be used in the praise of the Lord on Palm Sunday, had to be set free. Not only that, but the cult had to be ruled. The cult had to be able to be ruled. What I mean by that is it had to be broken. I don't know, many of you uh, are cowboys. You grew up as, as a cowboy. and One of the things I know about the farm and the ranch is that when your friends, when you're younger, say, go ahead, Andy, jump on the back of this one. You learn a lesson quickly. Real quick. And it wasn't eight seconds. You learn it real quick that the animal, the horse, the donkey, whoever it might be, um, if it's never been ridden on, it's not broken, it's not fit for someone to ride down the hill and to be used for the master's use. It need to be broken. I hear stories from my aunts and uncles and my brother and my mom told me about my grandfather. He died when I was quite young, maybe four or five years old. But the stories that they told me about my grandfather, that people around North Dakota and Minnesota would call him from miles and miles and miles away and ask my grandfather to come to break their horse. He was one of the best in the time of breaking a horse. And making that horse able for a rider to get on that horse and to be able to be used in the field, whether it be for plowing or this donkey to be able to be used to, to plow. But he had to be able to be ruled. He had to be broken enough so that he could be used. I submit to you the Lord Jesus. He sat on him. Because the colt made him his king. And the colt was guided by the Lord Jesus that sat thereupon. You know, you know what our problem is? One of the reasons why we get so off track and we don't get any traction and we don't go anywhere in life is because maybe we haven't set the Lord Jesus on the throne of our life. And maybe you haven't been broken. Maybe you haven't been let the Lord rule you in your life. Let me remind you of a passage of Scripture in the book of Romans, chapter 12. A very important passage of Scripture. It says right here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hey, you ought to present your bodies a living sacrifice. That colt had to be broken, and it was prepared before the foundations of the world to be involved in the praise of the Lord on this day. He had to be loosed, he had to be broken, he had to be able to be ruled. Surely, 
we have reason to praise the Lord. Let me ask you, are you born again? You ought to praise the Lord. Have you been redeemed? You ought to praise the Lord. Boy, that colt was redeemed. He, a lamb's blood, a lamb's life was taken so that that colt could live. And I'm here to tell you what happened that day in Jerusalem, that next week, if you will, as we celebrate Easter and Good Friday and all of that kind of stuff. I'm here to tell you, that's exactly what happened for you. When Jesus went down to Jerusalem, they rejected him as king. And you know what they did? They cried out, crucify him. And guess what they did? They mocked him. They beat him. They smote him with the hand. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. And guess what? He did all of that so that you could have life. He gave his life so that you could be redeemed and that you could have life and that you could be used in the praise of God on a daily basis. I want you to notice not just the colt and the carrying or the casting, but I want you to know the cry of praise here. If you go with me to verse 37 of Luke chapter number 19, Luke chapter number 19, if you notice here, verse 37, what's happening? So the colt is going down. Remember, he was already redeemed. He, he was uh, set free. He was not bound by any chains or any ropes. And then he was uh, ruled. He let the Lord sit upon him. And he was going down to Jerusalem. And then I want you to see the cry of praise here. Look at verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice. Mark chapter number 11 says they cried. And so this loud voice here was a cry of loud praise. I mean, they were letting everybody around them know that they were praising the one who was going to save them from their sins. Now, they might not have understood the cross and what it meant and how it was going to play into God's plan for all the ages. But I'm here to tell you, you and I know the entirety of the scriptures here, and we know exactly that Jesus was that lamb that was slain in Jerusalem so that you and I could have eternal life. And I think that is pause and cause for unending praise of our God. I want you to notice that this praise was biblical. It just wasn't a few people shouting it just wasn't a few people involved in a chant here or a motto or a slogan or a mascot or anything like that. This was a biblical, prophetic, if you will, praise. It was biblical. And when you and I praise God, we need to desire that whatever we're doing in life, we're praising God for the, and, and making sure that our praise is biblical. I've known a few Christians. They're going against God's will, clearly and plainly. And something comes to them on their way. And I've heard them praise God for it. Praise the Lord! Yeah, I know we're living together. I know we're living together, but you know what? We've got a house now. Praise the Lord! I know we're not married yet, but you know what? You know what? We were able to do this and we were able to do that. I mean, we hear it all the time, friend, but I'm here to tell you, let your praise be biblical praise. Talk about the Lord, His redemption, and talk about how you've been saved uh, from the bondage of that rope of sin and selfishness and, and all sorts of sin and how you've been set free by the Lord. And that's praise that needs to be going out. 
the praise here was biblical and the praise was loud. And uh, one of the things that you have to recognize during these trying times is our voice is a lot of what we have today. The, the physical touch, the hugs, the connection, the sitting next to one and the, the, the connection that we have in church is limited. But what we have is our voice. We have it over social media. We have it over Facebook. We have it on, our, on the telephone. We have it in any area of our life. And I'm reminded that these people gave, cried out praise to the Lord and it was loud. Let me ask you, does the praise of the Lord loudly come out of your life? Is the praise of the Lord not on your priority list? Do you spend a lot of time complaining? Griping? Spend a lot of time being bitter about things that you can't do or things that you can't affect? I want you to turn with me as we begin to close Psalms 148. I want to submit to you, Jesus was worthy to be praised on that day. And he's worthy to be praised today in your hearts and in your life. And I would love to say that our people here at Canyon Springs are loudly praising God with their life. Sometimes we all know someone that is obnoxiously loud. You ever have one of those in your home? Tracy, do we have one? I don't think we have one. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't think we have one. But there are some people, oh, my, you know what my girls were doing? They were pointing at me. <laughs> so maybe it's true we have one. Oh, boy. Okay. So, if you have ever met someone that's kind of loud and boisterous and all of that, and you, it can become obnoxious. But I submit to you, when the Lord is a priority in your life, it won't be. And it will be received well. And God will get the glory. And that's all that's important. Right now we have a rare opportunity to sing loud and sing loud the praises of our God. Why don't you go out this week in some way and somehow, whatever way you can, whether it be the phone, the internet, or Facebook, whatever it might be, but let people know about your loud praise of the Lord. When it's loud, it means that you have confidence in it. You're emphatic about it. In our home, once in a while, mostly the girls, uh, once in a while, they'll squabble and have a little cat fight. You know, claws come out and all that. But you notice sometimes the volume gets higher and higher and higher as the issue escalates. I want to encourage you, the pressure is on for believers to sing and to give honest praise to the Lord. And we should be louder and louder and louder with our praise of our God. Look at 148, Psalm 100, 148. I've got to find my way there. Let's read together here, Psalms 148. A lot of opportunities to praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights, praise ye Him and His angels, praise ye Him, all of His hosts, praise ye Him, sun and moon, praise Him and all ye stars light of light, praise Him ye heavens of the heavens and ye waters 
that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded that they were created. There's a good thought right there. Listen, if you are created by God, how much more should we just praise him for the fact that he created us and we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Look at verse 6. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. He's a faithful God. You can praise God because he's faithful. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and ye deeps, fire and hail, snow and uh, vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit. Full trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Here, listen. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above all the earth and heaven. Let's praise the Lord. Lord, together. And let's be mindful, Easter's coming. And we can praise him that we have a Savior that's not dead, but alive. And we have a Savior that provided all of these things for us. Salvation. Let's be people of praise. And let's bow our heads. And let's have an attitude of prayer. You're there at home, and let me ask you this question. Are you here needing to reevaluate your priorities? How are you willing to cast your garments down and set the Lord upon the top of your life? Are you willing... To praise God, even though you might not understand what's happening around you? Are you willing to give God glory for his goodness and his mercy that the scripture says endureth forever? Listen, church folks, today is a day that you can praise God. Tomorrow is the same day, and we have a faithful God, and we ought to be praising Him and praising Him for all eternity. We ought to be getting enough practice down here on earth because when we get to see Jesus, it's going to be praising and honoring and glory and a lot of holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, right? It's going to be a lot of that, and we ought to practice while we're down here and recognize that God is in control. I want to thank the Lord today for the fact that I can celebrate Easter next week because the tomb is empty. And I want us to praise together. Listen, has complaining come into your life? Has bitterness, negativity, heart, heartache, has these things limited your praise? I want to encourage you to unbind them, loose them, so that you could be used in the praise of God. Let me ask you, are you stubborn? The Lord wants to be priority in your life. He wants to be the control. He wants to be the writer. And you haven't let the Lord break you. You haven't let the Lord bridle you. You haven't let the Lord rule you. And you spend a lot of time huffing and puffing and bucking. And you're getting nowhere. Because you were created for a purpose. And it's not to huff and puff and snort and scratch the ground with your hoof and buck around, and eat, and drink, and do it all over the next day. God has a purpose, and it's for you to be used for his use, so that you could be involved in the praise of God. Let's praise him. Now, I don't know if you're watching today, and you know the Lord is your Savior. Let me tell you something. Jesus was that lamb that provided life for you. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he said it was finished. What was finished? It was the requirement 
that sin be paid for and atoned through the precious blood of a lamb. Jesus was that lamb. And the Bible says that when he rose from the dead and we received the gospel, the gospel is, did Jesus Christ die for you? Yes. Did he, was he buried? And did he rise the third day, conquering death, hell, and the grave? Yes. And the gospel is simply as this, friend. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you could pray a prayer something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am separated from you. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that my sin has separated me from a holy God. But I believe Jesus came. I believe he died on the cross for me. I believe he was buried and rose again for me. And dear Jesus, as best as I know, I want to trust in your resurrection, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave. And I want to ask you to come into my heart and to be my Savior today. Amen. Now let me ask you, if you prayed that prayer, you meant it in your heart, the Bible says that you've been redeemed. Redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb. We're going to close our service in a word of prayer. I want to encourage you to come back tonight at 6 o'clock. I want to encourage you to do business with God there at your home. Talk about this message this afternoon, this week. Identify areas in your life that you might need to be working on. Areas of bondage. Areas of will. Whatever it may be. Let's pray, church family. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you that we can praise you and you're worthy of our praise. And Lord, I do ask, Lord, that if there be one that came to know you as Savior today, Lord, I pray that you would encourage them and begin to light a fire to grow closer in knowledge of you. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd help us Christians to see how important that everyday praise is in the life of a believer. And Lord, we know that the perilous times that we're living in is something that you'll see us through, but we can praise you for that and for the future, how you're going to redeem us and take care of us and provide for our needs. Bless us now, Lord Jesus. Be with our people. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.